So if there is a settlement, and I know this is a bit of speculation, what do you think that looks like? You know, is Ripple paying a fine for 2013, 2015? XRP is free to then be relisted on exchanges, things along those lines? Yeah, I, at this point, uh, Stuart Alderati, who's the general counsel of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, uh, the CEO of Ripple, they have both now publicly said on more than one occasion that they won't settle hmm. unless ongoing and future sales of XRP by Ripple or anyone else in the secondary market are not considered securities. Mm. So the problem with the settlement, Tony, is that it would require the SEC to agree to some kind of statement, right? It doesn't, it, it could be in writing, it could be publicly announced, but they would have to agree that moving forward, XRP is not going to be considered a security. Mm. And the SEC doesn't like to do that, right? Except for Bill Hinman, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, the, the SEC normally doesn't like to kind of give that kind of clarity to one token, allegedly. Um, the problem that I see is more of a political one, which is you sued Ripple and say an XRP is a security, including secondary market sales. And then you want to go after all these other cryptos. How do you reconcile saying... XRP is not a security, but XLM is. XRP is not a security, but ALGO is. XRP is not a security, but ETH today is, right? And so that that's a, I'm not saying it's done. I'm just saying that that is a very narrow, narrow, like you got to thread the needle on that one, man, sure. to, to figure out how you can publicly do this and then still be able to go after, you know, other cryptos. Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. And as you can see, shout out JV for putting this up. I mean, obviously, Johnny Dean's always talked about being honest about his take on everything from, you know, his legal position, obviously being a Michi and just his experience in, you know, cases and just his overwhelming uh, guidance and information that he has in particular to the Ripple versus SEC stuff, even the stuff that's going on with the library versus SEC stuff. So that's kind of his take on it. Talking about got to really thread the needle for uh, the settlement to actually happen. And he says if, if those documents aren't supposed to be, uh, aren't forced to be presented, then he, he doesn't think that there is likely to be a settlement. And he was even talking about if that was, if that's the case, he sees this thing potentially going to the end of March and wouldn't be surprised if we were in May. Uh, so it's going to be a wait game to kind of see what happens. Uh, I'm just kind of anticipating 2023 would be the year that this thing ends. And if it, if it ends any anything short of that before 2023, I'll just be a happy camper. Uh, moving on here, we got some major stuff from uh, Eleanor Terry that had popped out earlier. I was working when this came out this morning. She says, breaking scoop, I have received a copy of Bill Hemmons' public calendar covering the entire tenure while at the SEC. It's extensive, 189 pages worth, of which I am still combing through, but here are some standouts. She says, Wednesday on March 28th at 11 a.m., Hinman has a scheduled meeting with uh, Scott Cooper, managing partner of A16Z. Let me move my mic closer. Thursday, March 29th, 12.30 p.m., Hemman had a scheduled meeting with Consensus and SSC Corporation Finance of official Amy Starr. Friday, April 6th at 1 p.m., Hemman had a scheduled meeting titled Call Meeting, referencing, I'm assuming, uh, Ethereum. Thursday, April 12th, 4.30 p.m., a meeting scheduled titled, uh, titled Ether. Monday, April 23rd, 5 p.m., a scheduled meeting with Joseph Lubin. So obviously you see Ethereum, Joseph Lubin, all this is, is, is taking place in these meetings. Uh, coming over here. And on the day him and gave his uh, famous speech at the Yahoo Finance All Market Summit, there was a scheduled meeting with Ripple Council and Valerie Sapinic at 10 a.m. More to come. All dates above her in 2018. Fred Raspoli says, wow, so many things to add to the lawsuit. So uh, coming over here, I wanted you, this is a long thread from uh, John Deaton uh, and replying to um, Eleanor Terrett's 
uh, tweet thread she has. So I highly recommend you come in and read this. He's talking about like uh, why the redaction, why the secrecy, and he's kind of exposing more of the shadiness and conflicts of interest with uh, in regards with him and in the SEC. So highly recommend you come in and check this out. It's, it's uh, starting with uh, says as Eleanor Terry reported shortly ago from December 20. So make sure you come in and check out this thread. So moving on from Eleanor Terry, she says I have a couple more standouts. Friday, November 20th, 2020 at 10.45 a.m., Hinman had a scheduled call with Valerie Sapinic. The entry is titled, Vow to Call Bill, uh, referencing XRP. I don't know what RE is, so I'm saying referencing. Monday, December 7, 2020 at 12.30 p.m., Hinman had a scheduled meeting with Ripple Council and Christina uh, Littman. She continues, who was the chief of the SC Enforcement Division Cyber Unit? That meeting took place 15 days before Clayton brought the lawsuit against Ripple. Johnny Deaton says, but why is him in meeting with Ripple on December 10 when he was no longer an employee at the SEC? His last day was December 4, 2020. He was a private citizen working for the EEA, the Enterprise of Theme Alliance law firm, um, Simpson Thatcher. Anyone who doesn't acknowledge that him and had an agenda is ignorant. I mean, straight up. And for us, that's been a part of this uh, community. I mean, we all know it's just shady, man. Uh, she also puts this up scoop. It would appear SEC... SEC and Tim Draper know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Check out this entry from Wednesday, August 23rd, 2017 at 11. Uh, if we click in here. Oh, let me zoom out. It says right here, meeting with Satoshi N and Tim Draper. Valerie Shapinik. Satoshi N and Tim Draper. Tim Draper. So who knows? Uh, thought that was quite interesting. Uh, oop, let me fix this. Okay, coming down here. What is she saying? Uh, this next one here. She says, after combing through the first two years of entries in the Hemen calendar, there were four total meetings that were scheduled to take place with consensus or officials associated with it, and at least two other meetings concerning ETH before Hemen's June 18 speech. I mean, this literally has conflicts of interest written all over it. This uh, this agenda that they had is quite evident. And we already know that. And just more truth is being surfaced. It's literally, we're just waiting for the, the dam to break and everything to spill over. Uh, coming out here, she says, according to the calendar, which may not be complete, Ripple Council met with the SEC, him in question mark, only once, and it was on the same day the speech was made. The calendar does not mention him in attendance at the Yahoo Finance Alt Market Summit. Two more years, uh, two more years of entries to go. So she's still, um, combing through everything. But speaking of, uh, the, the calendar not being complete, uh, Johnny Dean already had came, stepped up and said, yes, there's some income. There's some inconsistencies and some stuff that's been incomplete within those calendars as well. And when it comes to, um, where's it at? Speech was made calendar attendance, all summits. Um, yeah, I, I think long story short, there was just some specifications that were missing within the calendar. I think we're going to cover some of it here, uh, right here. So, uh, uh Johnny Dean says, the Hemant calendar entries are not com uh, complete entries. Uh, the SC has pulled another fast one, attempted to hide the truth. We know he met with attorney Lin from the China office of August 22, 20, 2019. Here's that day's entry. So if we come down here, you can see uh, you got uh, Elad Roysman here. Uh, I mean, this stuff is, th I mean, this stuff is just crazy. Uh, he continues down here. He says, uh, now what about the uh, Josh Bonnie meetings we know about on 11 28 17? And he's had some other dates here. It says, first two have uh, no entries during lunch hours. The second two have entries during lunch hours that were redacted under B6. The uh, quote, clearly unwarranted invasion of personal privacy rule. Why would his lunch meetings be redacted? If Bonnie is on the calendar in those two dates that are redacted, what would that mean regarding the SEC's knowledge of ethics violations? Are they redacting for privacy or to hide the blatant violations of criminal conflict laws? I mean, we all know the answer to that. Uh, he continues, from December 20, 2017 on June 14, 2018, him and SEC had four meetings with consensus as my undisputed timeline stated and three more meetings exclusively about ETH for a total of seven meetings exclusively on ETH. That's one meeting each month before the speech. During the time span, there were only three other external meetings related to crypto. One of them was the Coinbase about listing XRP in January of 2019, wherein the SEC did not disagree with Coinbase determination that XRP is not a security and XRP was listed in February 2019. Uh, Jungle Inc. put up uh, something interesting here. He says, since this was against the ethics department guidelines, maybe Hinman uh, didn't book it, which shows he knew what he was doing was wrong. 
I would suspect. I mean, we we all do. Crazy, man. Uh, I'm going to end on this one right here. This is Digital Asset Investor responding to Stefan Huber here. Let me just click in and make sure I get this right. So Stefan Huber um, puts this up. He goes, in 2017, the SEC claimed him and had no governmental calendar. They also claimed he didn't write or meet with Simpson Thatcher. Lies over lies. And he puts up this Securities and Exchange Commission um what is this office of free information services uh, document here and then uh, coming out here johnny deaton says St stefan uh i need a copy of this freedom information act response the sc said the same lame s word to me about personal use and i appealed it and got a letter for the gc of the sc agreeing with me that his calendar is an hc record subject to freedom of information i'm suing the sc in federal court and this helps man keep keep applying that pressure uh, we're, we're very lucky to have the community we have, you know, fighting the good fight. And Digital Asset Investor ends it with this. He says, Congress, when are you going to hold this agency gone rogue accountable? They are literally lying when Freedom of Information Act requests come through. This is the reality we live in. There's so much more I could have covered, but I felt like this was kind of like, I guess you could say the cherry on top of everything. Just kind of give you a, a concise yet informative version of kind of what's been happening coming over here looking at coin gecko we're currently sitting under a trillion dollar market cap currently down almost six percent for the day sitting at 953 trillion uh bitcoin sitting at 18,728. ethereum sitting at 1283 xrp took a big dump sitting almost at a negative 11 percent at 42 cents bitcoin fear and greed index at 20 updated in 20 hours i can definitely see this being a little bit lower so obviously there's a lot of market uncertainty so it's just going to be a waiting game to kind of see what happens but that's what i have for you make sure you come to the crypto is key conversation youtube channel subscribe follow us on twitter at crypto is key one I really appreciate you guys support out there i truly do with all that being said stay strong out there be safe